I think everyone knows that I became mayor 13 months ago. So this has been a 13-month process to get to where we are here this morning. During the campaign, uh, when I was running for mayor, I think I uh, explained my viewpoint, my position very clearly as regards to where I thought the city was in relation to this lawsuit and what I thought the proper action was to take. Despite that, when I became mayor 13 months ago, uh, I did not make any immediate changes in terms of the city's position or the city's defense. We continued to aggressively defend all litigation between the city uh, and the uh, plaintiffs, Brockton Power, with the same attorneys in the same manner that we always had. No changes. And I instructed that defense to continue. We continued to fund it. And basically, my role in the first six months, uh, I think, was primarily to do due diligence, to become uh, knowledgeable in all the aspects of the different disputes between Brockton Power and the city, uh, and to, you know, ultimately at some point make a decision as to what the best course was for the city to take. Uh, the probably the uh, really important point for me uh, was at the end of July when the Supreme Judicial Court decisions on appeals came down. And despite how some may have interpreted it, uh, it was clear through the advice I was given by my attorneys uh, that on all the important points, once again, Brockton Power had prevailed. Most importantly, that the permitting process that uh, led to Brockton Power being issued the permits to build the electric plant, that process was upheld by the court. And I think even in addition to that, uh, we were now out of appeals. That was the final appeal. Uh, and uh, Brockton Power prevailed on all but one point, and clearly uh, it left us in a precarious position. So after uh, spending some time with both the solicitor and his team and our outside attorneys, uh, I instructed the attorneys to uh, begin seeking a negotiated settlement that would be in the best interests of the city. And I think all along I've been very public in terms of what I thought the components would be of a, a fair settlement that it would have to involve the city of Brockton paying no money at all to Brockton Power, that it would have to include a negotiated pilot agreement, payment in lieu of taxes, that was fair and favorable to the city. We needed to negotiate that up front. I wouldn't make a deal without knowing what the revenue would be. And we also would need some sort of upfront cash payment because it's going to take about two and a half to three years to build the plant. And I felt that the city should begin to receive some benefits even during the construction phase of the plant. I requested uh, with the council uh, that they convene a special meeting to be briefed by the city's attorneys. I felt that the developments <coughs> were that significant and that I now had a good idea which direction we were going, that I wanted the council to be fully briefed by our attorneys so that they would know exactly what I knew. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the council did rebuff my efforts to do that. That meeting did not take place. However, I did send all of the, the recap of all of the litigation and the recap of the expenses, both current and projected, that I had planned to have the attorneys present directly to the council. I did send all of that information to the counselors. So in August, they had basically the same summary of the status of all the litigation. They had the same accounting for the legal expenses that had been occurred. I think at that point about 1.2 million. Today, we're over $1.5 million <coughs> of the taxpayer's money that has been spent to defend a lawsuit that my own attorneys tell me we have little or no chance of prevailing in. And I'll let the attorneys speak to that a little bit also. And it's clear that we're at the point where to do anything other than to try to settle this lawsuit would be irresponsible. It would place the city in great financial jeopardy. I think there was a very high likelihood that we would spend a couple million dollars more additional taxpayers' money uh, on top of the $1.5 million that's already been spent to ultimately get to a conclusion where we would uh, not prevail 
we would potentially owe tens of millions of dollars in damages, the plant would still be cited, and the city would have no bargaining position whatsoever to drive a good deal with the uh, developers of the plant. The legal advice along these lines all through this process of the past 13 months has been unanimous. The city attorneys involved, our outside attorneys involved, they have all been unanimous that the city should settle. And at the end of the day, I think that if the city spends one and a half million dollars on legal advice, we ought to follow it. And if I were not to follow that very expensive legal advice, uh, I would be negligent. I would uh, be putting the city in an untenable position, uh, potentially leading to rece financial receivership bankruptcy. Uh, we would uh, place the city's financial future at great risk and would hurt all the residents of the city. Uh, not, this is not just getting rid of a loss. This is a good settlement. We'll talk about the benefits. Um, but uh, over the next 20 years, this agreement will bring $82.85 million to the city of Brockton. On or about the 1st of December, the city council had the proposed settlement in front of them, and they were being advised on that settlement by their attorney, attorneys. In fact, uh, for the next two and a half months, the city, took, uh, the city council took no action, although they met, I believe, on five separate occasions in executive <coughs> session with their attorneys uh, to discuss the proposed settlement and failed to ever take any action. Uh, I believe that attorneys Costello and Lewison were invited to one of those meetings, attended one of those meetings, so that they could be available to answer the council's questions directly. Uh, to clear up one misconception, uh, I was not invited to any of the meetings, I didn't participate in any of the meetings, and I have no idea what was said or not said in the room. All I know is that after two and a half months and five <coughs> meetings with attorneys, uh, the City Council uh, was declining to take any action on the proposed settlement. And I think at that point, about two weeks ago, uh, there was a communication from the City Council's attorney to Brockton Powers <coughs> attorney that not only were they rejecting the settlement, but they wanted to initiate the litigation. They were sending interrogatories that they wanted answered. Um, that was very disappointing news to me. I think that for two and a half months, um, I was very cognizant of and respectful of the city council having the opportunity to do their own due diligence, uh, to have their own attorneys to consult with. And I really believed uh, that the council <coughs> would join me in settling the suits. Uh, and I'm, I was very surprised and I was disappointed that that didn't happen. Uh, but that's the situation two weeks ago. So at that point, uh, I did call the lawyers back in. I told them to reach out to Brockton Power and see if we could resurrect <coughs> the settlement without the city council being a party to it. The agreement that we have calls for um, Brockton Power to make annual payments to the city the total four million dollars per year. It's a guaranteed four million per year to the city. 3.9 million in lieu of taxes, one hundred thousand dollars for the sale of the sewer water, the sewer water that we currently pump into the brook every day. Um, the value of that over 20 years is eighty million dollars. Eighty million dollars to the city of Brockton. That's property tax relief, that's cops and firefighters and teachers that we would not be able to afford otherwise. Um, it is uh, critical to the city's financial future to have that revenue and to have it start coming in. In the meantime, uh, we also negotiated community benefits, some immediate direct payments to the city uh, that will come to the city the day the shovel breaks the ground. The day the shovel breaks the ground down on Oak Hill Way, uh, there will be a payment in the total of $2.85 million to the city. And that payment I have <coughs> designated to be distributed as, as follows. $1 million uh, will be um, directed to the Brockton Public Schools. $1 million will be used for public safety 
and the $850,000 will be used for city recreational purposes. And specifically, the million dollars to the schools, I will ask the school committee to consider spending that million dollars on technology for students, along with restoring middle school sports. Two major cuts in this past year's budget um, that I would like to see restored with that million dollars. Ultimately, that will be a decision that's made by the school committee, uh, but that's my request. At this time, my intention for the million dollars for public safety is to purchase a new ladder truck for the Brockton Fire Department that's desperately needed. Um, in the event we're able to make that purchase without the million dollars, in the meantime, you know, it'll, it'll still go to public safety. Uh, that million will be directed to public safety. And the 850000 for recreation here in the city will be used primarily to build an artificial turf soccer football field. The, the extent of the damages that are being sought by the plaintiffs, uh, and as, if the, as the court says, if proven before a jury, would be millions and millions, close to 50 or $60 million in damages. <coughs> to litigate that uh, uh, case would have cost additional millions. And then finally, it was quite clear, given the, the uh, uh, <coughs> dual track of the litigation going on about the permitting and the appeals, culminating ultimately the summer with the SJC decision, it was clear that the, the plant was going to be built, that they were winning all of those permitting and uh, legal battles. Uh, so the plant would come in. Uh, very strong likelihood that if uh, we went to a jury trial, the jury uh, could find a conspiracy of, to violate civil rights to prevent uh, the plant from being built. So you would have a, a triple whammy, if you will, to the city. The cost of defense would be extraordinary. Uh, if we lost before a jury, the damages would be astronomical and catastrophic, and the plant was coming in anyway. So that was an easy an appropriate decision. I believe our, our opinion or advice to the mayor was appropriate to say negotiate the best deal uh, and a favorable deal for the city of Brockton to get millions that would not otherwise come to the city because when when and if the plant was permitted by the state without an agreement, they would the plant would not be required to spend uh, or pay to the city all of these uh, community benefits and the uh, pilot uh, payments. So. It was clear that this was the appropriate and, and necessary course, and ultimately, uh, not at the end of a shotgun, but quite, quite differently, was a negotiated arms length deal that, that has brought a lot of benefits to the city. Yeah. Yeah, I think, if I, if I may, one important factor was that we held in consideration was as they were approaching, Brockton Power was approaching and becoming closer and closer to obtaining all that they sought, it would have been clearly less viable to uh, have any negotiation with them for community benefits, which the mayor was able to obtain. As they were going to cross the goal line, they would be less inclined to sit down and talk about mutual benefits for the city. So the fact that we were able to obtain this during that timing, I think, was a particular coup for the city. Yeah. And I may just add uh, briefly, in, in conjunction with what uh, Doug and Phil had just said, when we were considering our posture in this case, there were three main parameters that we looked at. Number one was the litigative risk and the cost of continued litigation. As uh, Doug and the mayor had, had just stated, the risks were substantial and the costs were substantial. Uh, given the amount of money that had been spent to date, I would clearly suggest that that is the tip of the iceberg and what the city would have had to bear in legal costs had this matter proceeded through full trial. Number two, we always had in mind the likelihood of the success of the permitting process for the plant. As the mayor had noted, a, a threshold point in this whole situation was the SJC decision that was rendered in July. At that point in time, where, where the SJC, the ultimate arbiter of this dispute, upheld all salient points of the EFSB permit that Brockton Power had obtained, it appeared to us that the proponents of this project were very likely to obtain all necessary permits and approval that they would need to ultimately develop this plant. That was a key consideration. And third, as Phil just noted, we were always cognizant and cogent about what benefits could the city attain from the resolution of this case. The ultimate victory we could have obtained in this case had this matter gone through full trial 
would be the dismissal of the 1983 claims against all the defendants. Rest assured, that will be fully achieved through the settlement agreement. The settlement agreement will dismiss any and all claims against all city officers, agencies, boards, the city itself, and will result in releases issued by Brockton Power and the defendants mutually with respect to all claims. In other words, the case will be dismissed, the substantial claims that have been asserted will be dismissed, there is no admission whatsoever of any liability of wrong or wrongdoing by the city or any of its offices in this matter, and we will ultimately walk away from this litigation without paying a penny in damages. That's a very key factor here. In addition, because of the timing of this settlement, we were able to negotiate a very substantial community benefits package and very favorable pilot agreement terms, as the mayor had outlined. So we deemed it appropriate at this point in time to take advantage of the opportunity that was presented to avoid the substantial litigative risks and costs and to cement and nail down a very solid and beneficial package for the city. In essence, that's why we're here today uh, notifying the public of the settlement agreement. Uh, as Attorney Lewison said, uh, the judge was pretty clear that, you know, if proven, the, the, the city's liable. I mean, that, that decision is full of smoke signals that we're in big trouble. And the reason we know we're in big trouble is because we know what it is they're going to discover and what they're going to find out in the deposition. It's not like we don't know what they're going to have when we get to trial. We do know. And we know we're going to lose. Um, so, to to barrel into this and continue to spend these millions of dollars when we know what we know, we know what the judge has said, um, it, it just, it, it would have been um, totally irresponsible on my part to allow this to go any further. And I did not come to the decision lightly. When I say it was an easy decision, I mean that the choices were clear and there was never a second of hesitation from my part as to which was the right decision. Uh, so I do believe the location is suitable. I do believe the technology is safe. Numerous state and federal agencies have to sign off on this type of plant being constructed, just like they do with the new plant that's being constructed in Salem. Um, and then I think an important side note is that in this final negotiating stage in the last couple of weeks since the city council chose not to uh, accept the settlement, um, we did uh, Kate, I'll let you help with the language, but we were able to get additional safeguards built into the agreement that protect the residents of the city uh, even further. Uh, the agreement now requires that all data, record keeping, all of this uh, extensive data that the plant is required to report to DEP will also now be required to be reported directly to the city. So we're not relying on a third party to keep track of it. Uh, if there were ever any type of an issue with the emissions, and I firmly believe there never will be, but if there were, we would know about it immediately. We would be in a position to take action immediately uh, to, to safeguard the residents. We're betting the ranch, and it's not our ranch to bet. I had a meeting with the prior mayor, and I've also had meetings with Mayor Carpenter, and I think I've made a couple of public comments saying we're in extreme jeopardy here because my understanding was the case of the city in defending itself was rather weak. I don't want to say it was a loser. That's not my term. <laughs> but I, I didn't think we had a good situation. So now I'm, I'm thinking we're in a much better situation than I would have anticipated some months ago. Not only are we walking away from a potential exposure that we can't afford, that we were likely to get hammered with, but we're getting money in that I wouldn't have thought was achievable because I think the other side knew they had a pretty strong case. Yet there we have mitigation money coming our way, and we've got $4 million a year coming our way. Uh, just to put that in perspective, every year the city of Brockton's tax levy recently has gone up by about $4 million. That's the two, uh, potential levy. That's the 2.5% plus new growth. So what we've had available to us for additional revenue to spend because the state isn't helping us out very much anymore, it's all on our backs. That's about $4 million a year. Here's another $4 million a year that will be coming our way in just a few years. So I agree with the mayor. This is a good day for the city, and the ranch is safe. That's my final point. This plant didn't pluck itself down in the middle of a commercial zone or randomly choose someplace in Brockton to the 
to the uh, opposition of the people, they introduce themselves into an area specifically designed for that type of operation and business, in an industrial zone. And it would be permitted in that particular area. So in effect, we had been fighting against our own zoning ordinances, and that had been a major difficulty. How do you stop an industrial use from going into an industrial zone? And that, had be, that was a significant problem that we had to face, and I don't believe we would be able to overcome in the end. More if you count the cases that were consolidated. I was involved in, I was part of the team that defended those cases. And um, every stone was looked under, every avenue was thought about. Um, it was an aggressive defense, and, and Phil's absolutely right. The, the major difficulty we faced was the primary issue in zoning is whether or not the use is allowed, and this was a specifically permitted use in that area. Um, so on the permitting appeals, you were essentially arguing tangential issues, and it made it quite difficult, and, and as a result, we were unsuccessful in, in those appeals. Part of the, the monies aside from the water and tax payments, I know some of it, public safety, a million dollars. Uh, there was a million dollars that you have said, Mayor, is going to go to the school system and the 850000 going for the soccer field. Was the $1 million that was going to the schools uh, in, someone, in another body's hands? Was, was that in the city council's hands to do with it? Um, I, yeah, so I think that this is, a, I'm going to let the attorneys okay. give the correct legal answer, sure. but it's essentially the same settlement that the council chose to take a pass on, but there were a few provisions of it that had to be renegotiated since uh, since the, the the provision that we put in there, and uh, one of those was the distribution of the 2.85 million. And I, I did change it a little bit. Um, I, I feel that I'm directing this money towards some critical needs of the city that we don't have the money sitting around to pay for otherwise. We need a ladder truck for the fire department. We need to restore the cuts in technology in middle school sports in the schools. And we need to build a recreational facility here in the city. And this is going to accomplish all three of those goals using uh, someone else's money. Uh, and and uh, so that's, that may have been tweaked or that was tweaked since the version that uh, went to the city council. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, isn't it true also that the, uh, the willingness of the Brockton Power folks to provide $2.85 million initially was contingent upon having no continued opposition from the city council? Right. And when they wouldn't participate, the willingness to put 2.85 on the table wasn't there anymore. Right. So I, I think That's the correct. attorney should cover that. So that, that 2.85 was lost when the... Uh, when, when the council chose not to accept the settlement. So I, I think it, it, it took a lot of hard negotiating to get um, the full 2.85 back because a, a portion of that clearly uh, was to, to get the benefit of the council also accepting the settlement. That's so, absolutely correct. Yeah. That's absolutely correct. I guess one other follow-up. Somebody else might have a question here. Uh, I think you had referenced uh, uh, something that had taken place in 2000 in regards to the sale of water. Um, and then there, there was a change from how the vote was taken once there was somebody, a, a winning, someone had won a bid, and that there was something that, was it all done around 2000 that, that all of these actions were taken? Was this a course of action that was taken late, later on after the bid was, some years later after the bid was won by Brockton Powell? So, so, I, I think somewhat that, later right? on, 2000 was the <clears throat> city council's vote to approve an order that would uh, allow the sale of affluent with the water to the uh, highest and best bidder. Then in 2007, shortly after Brockton Power filed applications with the state, the city council had amended their order calling for a two-third vote to sanction any of those sales. And that two-third vote is invalid, in my opinion. And this was after they were aware that Brockton Power right. was the... A month and a half after. Thing. And that made up part of the allegations in the civil rights claim right, to say that, that that would be hard to articulate a valid basis for that. And, and that leads to why the mayor is able to be able to sign off on yeah, that? Yeah, so I mean, I'll, I'll give you the plain English version from all the lawyers. Uh, the, um, this sale of the sewer water uh, to Brockton Power was authorized by the city council back in 2000. And essentially, it's been sitting here on the mayor's desk since 2000. The last two mayors have chosen not to sign it. 
I have decided to sign it. But it's, 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 it's legal, it's authorized, it's existing. The city council authorized it. And uh, if someone wants to try to challenge my ability to do that, they can go right ahead. Uh, but I, I feel that we have a very strong opinion from the city solicitor. Phil actually gave me a legal opinion on this that goes several pages that we will make available along with the copies of both agreements. I'm going to make, uh, and I don't have to, but I'm going to release it. Um, I know I'm always accused of backroom deals and keeping secrets. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to actually authorize the release of that legal opinion that the city solicitor provided me uh, explaining the reasons why I have the authority to sign the agreement, and that's why I did sign it uh, just a little while ago. So, so there's no statute of limitation. There's no limitation. No, there's no. Time there was no. There was no rescission. No revocation. There was no sunset clause on it, okay. and there was nothing indicating that it expires after a certain amount of years. Wasn't was that a separate project that was proposed at that time than the current project? Yes. In yes. Was a different project. Yes. There was an assignment made by the prior company to the current company, so there was a full assignment of rights. For the same purpose, And uh, just to clarify, the 2007 action yeah. wasn't uh, an ordinance and an amendment to an ordinance. That occurred in 2007. And just a, a but the, but the agreement was for the same site for the same purpose right. and, and for the same and, use and, and the successor in interest is now it's got all of the rights that flowed from that it was actually document. a smaller project back then right slightly yes smaller. okay yeah but yeah basically the same slightly smaller yeah. The, yeah the 2007 orange when that went into effect in the city uh when the council voted it in was that reviewed by the law department of the city at the time no they have legislative council so city city council has their own attorney so that ordinance was reviewed by their own attorney, but not by the city's attorney. Well, I know it was not reviewed by the law department, the city's law department, my office. I don't know if they had it reviewed by their own legislative council. I can't speak to that. Is that typical practice that the city's law department wouldn't review the city ordinances that are taking effect? Well, in this particular instance, we were not asked to review that particular ordinance. Okay. Mark? What type of action do you anticipate from the council? Uh, well, I guess they'll probably be as disappointed in me as I was in them. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that the uh, vast majority of the councilors uh, realize that I'm acting simply in the best interest of the city. There's, there's no other um, motivation here. Um, you know, I've got to believe that the councilors know what I know. They met with their attorney five times. So I've got to believe that they know what I know, and in their heart of hearts, they know I'm doing the right thing.